You devour horror movies, scoffing at the cheap scares. You crave the adrenaline rush of haunted attractions, rolling your eyes at the predictable tricks. But what if I told you the truly terrifying stuff isn't made up? We're about to venture into the hidden corners of the world. Places where the earth itself seems to shiver with unease. Where structures whisper of forgotten horrors. These aren't special effects or fictional nightmares. This is the dark underbelly of reality, where what you see will haunt you long after the screen fades to black. So, are you still sure you can handle it? Do you have the guts to face the places that make your worst nightmares seem like bedtime stories? All right, first up, we have the Plutonium at Heropolis, located in what is now modern-day Turkey. In Heropolis, there is a stone gate which leads to a cave named Plutonium after the god of the underworld. And what, might you ask, makes people believe that this cave is the real- And what, might you ask, makes people believe that this cave is the real live entrance to hell? The cave have been known to drop dead right out of the sky, smack down onto the cursed earth. And not only that, but priests have been said to perform sacrifices using the caves by simply walking cattle into its entrance, which would cause them to literally just die. The cows, not the priests. The priests somehow were exempt from the strange deadly fate, which a Greek historian by the name of Starbo said was likely due to the fact that they were castrated. Hot take. Scientists who studied the cave, however, claimed that the reason the priests were able to survive is because the cattle had died from carbon dioxide poisoning. And because the CO2 was much more highly concentrated near the floor, where the cows' heads hung, they died while the priests did not. Okay, but that doesn't explain the birds, so... Just saying. Next up we have the Clifton Gates of Hell. If I were to tell you to picture what a gateway to hell looked like, or where one would be, you'd probably picture an ancient city or some sort of dungeon beneath an old castle or something like that. But this gateway is right in New Jersey. Not a place usually associated with hell, unless the idea of being stuck in a room full of fist bumping clubbers sounds like torment to you. Yes, that's a Jersey Shore joke, cause it's 2012 in my world. In Clifton, there's a series of tunnels and storm sewers that are rumored to lead to a dark otherworldly place. Some say hell itself. For decades, ghost stories and urban legends have been told about the tunnels with people daring each other to venture deeper and deeper into the darkness. Some say they've heard ominous sounds emanating from the depths of the tunnels. Aside from all the spooky stories though, there have also been very real cases of people entering these tunnels and never coming out. First of all, they are very dangerous. They're, they're drainage tunnels, so there is a very real danger of being swept up in torrents of water. And like with any tunnel system like this, you really don't know who could be lurking around any corner, let alone what. Next we have Hoska Castle, your go-to castle if you're looking to have a hell of a time. Sorry. The castle is located in Prague and it was built in the 13th century. Why? To cover a chasm, a crack in the earth that historians believe to be a gateway to hell. Inside the castle they placed a chapel directly above the crack, through which mysterious gases and atrocious smells emanated. They believed that by doing this they would seal whatever bad spirits were trying to escape from the fiery pits of the devil's domicile. The castle was not built to be lived in. It had no running water, nor was it near any bodies of water. It had no points of lookout, nor was it able to protect against attack. It was simply a means to an end to protect the people of the town from the demons that wished to join them on the surface. Before the castle's construction, the chasm plagued the town with fear, so out of curiosity, authority figures came up with a way to explore its depths. Prisoners, in exchange for their freedom, would be lowered down into the pit, and while most chose to stay in their cells, one man accepted the offer, but when he was lowered down, he screamed viciously and violently, and when he resurfaced, he looked as though he had aged for like decades. And uh, he died soon after from unknown causes, so it's probably a good idea they covered the thing up. Next up, we have Stull Cemetery in Kansas. This is one of the most notorious cemeteries in the United States. Not only are there a whole collection of ghosts and evil spirits said to roam the grounds, but an entrance to the underworld as well. This entrance was said to be in the basement of the abandoned church, a stairway that went down and down for ages. But if you were brave enough to climb down those stairs, you'd be met with total darkness. Before hearing the sounds of hellish laughter with a gruesome hag coming out of the shadows trying to pull you into the depths, you could try to outrun her, but climbing back up those stairs would now take weeks. 
It's also said that the devil himself lurks throughout the cemetery on Hallow's Eve, along with a ghostly woman in white who lures drivers to their deaths along the edge of the highway. So you've probably heard of St. Patrick's Day, but what about St. Patrick's Purgatory, located on Station Island in the Republic of Ireland? It is said that St. Patrick prayed to Christ for a way to show the inhabitants of the island the truth of his preachings. So what did Christ do? He opened the gateway to Purgatory. So like, I guess this one is more of like a gate halfway to hell, which makes sense because this is the halfway point of today's video. The gateway manifested as a pit inside of a cave in the corner of the island. A man who was sent down into the pit told of his experience. He described the fiery depths of hell that awaited those at the end of the tunnel should they continue their life of not believing in Christ. Okay, so maybe it was like a full gateway to hell. I don't really understand the whole purgatory thing, but I think that you go there when you want to find salvation and you can see hell, but you can't go to hell unless you're actually dead. Anyways, many travelers came to the island to seek atonement for their sins. They would lock themselves inside of the cave for days to achieve their goal, and of course, many of them claim to have seen the gates of hell. Next we have the gates of Guinea. Now Guinea isn't hell in the traditional sense, but there are dark spirits that reside there and it's said they can be set free from their realm if you're not careful. So in voodoo tradition, Guinea is a realm where souls pass through before reaching the afterlife. It's not a place of torment and punishment, it's just a void kind of in between the world of the living and the dead. It's said to be overseen by the powerful Loa Baron Semedi. But it's believed that the living can access this plane through the gates of Guinea, which some believe are located in various spots in New Orleans, particularly near Canal Street and the surrounding cemeteries. The tomb of the famous voodoo priestess Mary Laveau is said to mark the first gate. Now it's said that the order in which these gates are opened is also very important. If the order is wrong, dark spirits may find their way into the world of the living. Next up we have the Mayasa Volcano located in Nicaragua. It has also affectionately been referred to as La Boca del Inferno, the mouth of hell. So I guess it's more of a mouth than a gate. Semantics. Anyways, when the Spanish discovered the volcano, they planted a cross around its rim as a way to exorcise the devil. I don't mean cardio, I mean like an exorcism. And locals, although they did not believe the volcano to be a gateway to hell, often sacrificed young women by throwing them into the lava as a way of trying to end droughts. They believed that their actions would appease the mountain god, who they believed would then provide them with rain for their efforts. This only reaffirmed the belief of Spanish settlers that the volcano was connected to hell as they saw the locals' dedication to appeasing the mountain god through human sacrifice to them having fallen for the devil's trap. Either way, human sacrifice, big no in my books. Next we journey over to Greece to discuss the tranquil Acheron River. Now looking at it, you'd think this river led to paradise, but according to Greek mythology, it's an entrance to the underworld. Hades, the god of the underworld, ruled over the realm where the souls of the dead went after they passed away. The Acheron River served as the boundary between the world of the living and the realm of the dead. It was thought that the souls had to cross this river to enter the underworld. The Acheron was often depicted as this dark, gloomy river, which is hard to believe looking at it. I mean, look at that blue water. You know what's a dark and gloomy section of water? Toronto Harbor. I was, oh my god, I remember when I was a kid, I was canoeing out there once. I wasn't even a kid, I was, this was a few years back, but I was canoeing out there and I hit a wave wrong and all, all this oh, just gunky water just washed into the boat and it just stank, it was full of garbage. That, that is a place where I could see uh, leading to hell. But in some versions of Greek mythology, the Atron was also associated with the concept of punishment and purification. Souls who had committed sins in life were said to undergo a process of judgment and purification before finally being allowed to enter into the afterlife proper. Next we have Feng Du, aka the City of Ghosts, aka one of apparently many gateways to hell. So unlike the other locations on this list that have a specific gate, hole, set of stairs, cave, whatever, the entire city of Feng Du is said to be a passage into the devil's dwelling, which isn't surprising as the city has been dedicated to the dead. It's filled with shrines and temples and was actually named after two officials whose names combined literally translate to 
King of Hell. It is when someone dies in the town that the city becomes a gateway to the afterlife, but heading down to the underworld or ascending to heaven isn't as simple as just stepping foot in Fengdu. There are actually three stages that aid in determining a person's fate. First, a person must cross the Bridge of Hopelessness, which separates life from death and is guarded by demons known to push people into the waters below, which will drag them straight down to hell. If the deceased make it past the bridge, they head on to their next obstacle, the Ghost Torment Path, where the King of Hell himself will pass judgment on their souls. If a person makes it past this stage, they have just one final task before their fate is determined. And that task is standing on one leg for three minutes. Kinda kills the vibe if you ask me, but hey, you win some, you lose some, you might want to work on your balancing if you don't want to end up in hell. I'm going to finish things off today with the Darvaza Gas Crater in Turkmenistan. This crater, famously dubbed the Door to Hell, has to be one of the strangest spots on the planet. This is a large crater, about 230 feet in diameter. It sits in the middle of the Karakum Desert and it's always on fire. It's been burning since the 80s, some say even as early as 1971. And as for why? Well, one story goes that Soviet scientists were drilling in the area, hoping to tap into a natural gas reservoir, but then the ground collapsed, forming the crater that we see today. And fearing the release of poisonous gases into the atmosphere, the scientists decided to set the crater on fire, hoping it would burn off safely but then it just never stopped burning. Politicians have come out over the years saying the crater needs to be dealt with. Even as recently as 2022, it was announced that the crater was going to be extinguished, but that hasn't happened yet. Number 10, Shangri-La. First described in writing by English author James Hilton, Shangri-La is a utopia nestled in a valley in the western end of the Kunlun Mountains, which has become synonymous with an earthly paradise. It is said that the people who lived there were almost immortal, living hundreds of years longer than normal people and aging very slowly. Hilton was the first to call it by this name, but ancient Tibetan scriptures mention seven such places, which were created to be sacred places of refuge for Buddhists in times of strife. The name seems to come from Shang, a district in southern Tibet, Ri, the Tibetan word for mountain, and La, meaning pass. Therefore, Shang Mountain Pass is believed to be the place where the mythological city exists, but that hasn't stopped other places from claiming the title. In 2001, a county on the northwestern part of the Yunnan province in China renamed themselves Shangri-La County, though many dispute their claim, since it seems that Hilton actually traveled to a place called the Hunza Valley, located close to the China-Pakistan border, which is an isolated green valley surrounded by mountains enclosed on the western end of the Himalayas, so it fits the description pretty well. But the people there actually seem to age faster due to increased ultraviolet radiation on the higher altitude areas, so the jury's still out on that one. Before we get to number nine, folks, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It helps us out so that we can keep bringing you the most amazing videos. Number nine, California. Now, I know what you're thinking. Connor, if California isn't real, then where does Mickey live? Well, I'm not talking about that California. I'm talking about the place the state was named after. In a Spanish novel published in 1510, a place akin to the Garden of Eden or Atlantis was described by the author as a mysterious island, quote, to the right hand of the Indies, entirely populated by women and had no metal other than gold on it. It was ruled by Queen Khalifa, which is where the island got its name. California. When Spanish explorer Hernan Cortez came to North America, he thought that he'd found the mythological place off of the mainland of America, because there appeared to be an island, when really it was only the bottom peninsula of the state across the Sea of Cortez, which was named after himself. But Cortez was obsessed with the story, and since this island was technically to the right of the Indies and had so much gold on it, you can see how the name came to mind, and thus California was found. Well, they explored north and realized that it was not in fact an island that didn't stop Cortez and others from drawing it as one on maps for hundreds and hundreds of years. YouTuber Johnny Harris actually has a fantastic video all about that if you want to hear more. But for now, the location of the storybook version of California still remains a mystery. Number 8. Thul Stepping into Norse mythology, which has some of my favorite stories, Thul is a cold and peaceful place where they had months with no sunlight, said to be located between Scandinavia and Iceland. 
The ancient Greek explorer Pythias was the first to write about Thule during his travels around 330 BC. He was also one of the first to describe the effects of the moon on the tides and to estimate the length of the British coastline and was a specialist in longitude and latitude. Some scholars believe that Thule is just another name for what is now called Norway, while others think that it is truly a lost island off the coast of Iceland. The Germanic tribes in Thule allegedly showed Pythias around their homeland and explained that in the winter the sun did not rise at all, but in the summer there was no night. Number 7. Camelot Known as the court and castle where King Arthur reigned, Camelot first appeared in 12th century texts and eventually became synonymous with Arthur and the world that surrounded his stories. Some people believe that the place is entirely fictional, but many more still have attributed it to other places in Great Britain where castles still remain standing. Debate has been going on since the 15th century about the location of the beautiful capital of Arthur's kingdom, and we may never know the true location where Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table call their home. Number 6. Leonice Sticking in Arthurian legend, Leonice was the home of the hero Tristan and was said to have been lost to the sea. The story of Tristan and Isiolt sees the two traveling across the kingdom from Ireland to Cornwall to deliver Isiolt to Tristan's uncle for marriage, but the two unknowingly drink a love potion and fall for each other, having to endure many many battles to save their love. The kingdom was supposedly located on the Isles of Scilly, and the 140 islands that exist there now are apparently just the hilltops of the now sunken kingdom off the coast of Cornwall. There is evidence to suggest that water levels were remarkably lower at the time, and that in the last 3,000 years there have been enough submergence that this lost kingdom could still exist in the water below. If they ever made a movie about Tristan, I wonder if they'd get Liam Neeson to play the Leonesian. Number 5. Azatlan the Aztecs were one of the most powerful civilizations to emerge from the ancient Americas, and so much about them has been lost to time and to conquerors wiping out their history. While much is known about their later days as a civilization, we know very little about their origins. Allegedly, the mysterious island of Aztlan is where the Aztec people came together to create their society before migrating to the Valley of Mexico. According to legend, there were seven tribes who lived in seven caves near the island, and in order to maintain peace between their peoples, they came together and moved to Azatlan, which means the land to the north, the land from whence we, the Aztecs, came. Since it was so long ago, the island could have been in an area that is no longer submerged in water, and searches for it have taken place from the bottom of Mexico all the way up to Utah, but it's yet to be found. Some think it's pure myth, while others hold out hope that it will be discovered. Number 4. Julfar Home to the legendary Sinbad the Sailor, Julfar is one of the most famous cities of Arabia that has been lost to the desert. Located near the now super modern Dubai, Julfar was the hub for the entirety of the southern Arabic trade in the Middle Ages, because unlike other lost desert cities, Julfar was a bustling port town. Now here's the cool part, this city has actually been found. In the 1960s, archaeologists discovered signs of settlement and civilization dating all the way back to the 6th century, and have since found countless residences, shops, and items which have helped us unearth the mysteries of this lost city. This find was very important because it helps historians fill out the timeline of the area, showing how neighboring towns received goods and made trades, as there were few port towns described or found before. Number 3. El Dorado. The very idea of a city made entirely of gold is enough to fascinate people. Add in the fact that the place has been lost and is awaiting a brave explorer to discover it, now you've got a legend. The origins of the tale come from the Muisca tribe in Colombia, and El Dorado doesn't actually refer to a city, but to the king at the center of the city or the society. The Muisca tribe had an affinity for golden treasures, and often used them in rituals for their gods, and one of their most important rituals was conducted when they got a new king. The king would be stripped naked, covered in gold dust, and set on a raft adorned with gold and jewels to the middle of Lake Guadavita. The townspeople would then throw golden coins and trinkets into the lake to appease the gods, and the king would wash the dust off of himself in the lake, after which he was known as the Gilded One, or El Dorado. In 1545, conquistadors attempted to drain the lake to find the lost treasures, and found gold along the edges of the lake, proving their theory. They used bucket chains to drain as much as they could, but they couldn't reach the center. And in 1580, a businessman tried to drain it again, and while lowering the water level and finding treasure along the edges, he too couldn't reach the center. And in 1965, the country of Colombia named Lake Guadavita a protected area, making it illegal to do any more searching. It is estimated that at the center of the lake lies what could amount to billions of dollars in ancient gold relics, 
but we will never know for sure. Number two, Kalahari. In 1885, a Canadian entertainer and adventurer named Guillermo Farini, also known as the Great Farini, became one of the first Westerners to cross the unexplored and treacherous Kalahari Desert in southern Africa. When he returned to Canada, he wrote a paper and showed photographs of ruins he discovered which proved the existence of a civilization which had been lost to the desert sands. In his paper, he wrote, we camped near the foot of it, beside a broken line of stone which looked like the Chinese wall after an earthquake, and which, on examination, proved to be the ruins of quite an extensive structure, in some places buried beneath the sand, but in others fully exposed to view. He continued on to say, We traced the remains for nearly a mile, mostly a heap of huge stones, but all flat-sided, and here and there the cement perfectly plainly visible between the layers. Many, many expeditions have been conducted to find the lost city, including 12 by the grandparents of none other than Elon Musk, who wants to steer away from ancient civilizations and start a new one on Mars. A 2016 documentary series used aerial photography and radar in conjunction with Farini's descriptions and found some man-made ruins near an oasis in the Kalahari. More exploration is needed, but it's very possible that we have found this lost city. And finally, we reach our number one, which is of course, Atlantis. Arguably the most famous lost city, Atlantis has captured the imagination of people from around the world since it was first mentioned in writing by the Greek philosopher Plato in 360 BC. It is said that the island was a place of extremely advanced technology and an unmatched navy, but it was lost in one terrible night of fire and earthquakes and sank into the sea. Since then, there has always been someone looking for the lost city to prove it's real, and one of the most promising expeditions was made by Canadian Israeli journalist and investigative archaeologist Simcha Yakubovich, who has made many documentaries and discoveries about ancient civilizations. He partnered with film director James Cameron and used Plato's text and new emerging technology to find some incredible evidence on the sea floor. Six Bronze Age stone anchors off of the coast of Spain in the Strait of Gibraltar, one of the areas believed to be the resting place of Atlantis. One of the other main theories is that the Atlanteans were actually the Minoan civilization on the island of Santorini, Greece. Around 3,600 years ago, the Thera eruption occurred and the island shattered, and it, as well as the Minoans on it, were lost to the sea. With the location and the way the island was lost being so similar to Plato's descriptions, this seems like a great candidate for the lost city of Atlantis. Number 10. Dracula's Castle in Bran, Romania Bran Castle is a castle in Bran, Romania that is a national monument and landmark in Transylvania. It's commonly known outside of Transylvania as Dracula's Castle because it's the only castle in all of Transylvania that actually fits Bram Stoker's description of Dracula's Castle even though he never visited Romania. Most historians agree that Vlad III Dracula never set foot in Castle Bran, which was neither a friendly place for him to visit nor under his rule. Nonetheless, this castle is still creepy. The castle has 57 rooms and of course, a secret passage. While being beautiful during the day, the castle takes on a whole other look at night. In the villages near Bran, there is a belief in the existence of evil spirits called ghosts or strigoi. Until half a century ago, it was believed that there existed certain living people who were leading a normal life during the day, but during their sleep at midnight, their souls left their bodies and haunted the village, tormenting people in their sleep. So yeah. I'd stay away from this castle at midnight. Number nine, Savitri Bai Puel Hostel in Chandigarh, India. This is a hostel where spirits have been seen by students. Apparitions with and without heads are noticeable from the windows of some of the hostel rooms, accompanied with loud thumps. The hostel security official, Bal Karan, said, I suddenly heard a lot of shouting from the fifth floor. It must have been around 3 a.m. then. When I reached the girls, they claimed they they saw a mysterious person floating around. I checked the entire premises with two colleagues but couldn't find anything. Experiencing goosebumps at the slightest mention of a floating apparition, girls in the hostel kept their lights on while sleeping and let music play in the background. A student said, this is not someone's imagination, more than 10 of us have seen the ghost. Don't dismiss this as mere superstition. Number 8. Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, Massachusetts the Lizzie Borden House is notorious for being the home of Lizzie Borden and her family, and it is the location of the 1892 unsolved double murder. 
of Lizzie's father and stepmother, Andrew and Abby Borden. At about 11.15 a.m., Lizzie discovered her father dead, repeatedly struck in the head with a sharp instrument. Upstairs, his wife's body was found, even more brutally mutilated. No weapon was found, though an axe found in the basement was suspected. Lizzie was arrested and tried for both murders in June 1893 but was acquitted, giving the circumstantial evidence. You can now take tours of the house or even stay the night. While some guests do not witness anything, many regularly claim to experience strange things throughout the house. This includes strange odors, voices, objects moving on their own, feeling touched at night, and footsteps. This house is considered one of the most haunted houses in the United States. Number 7. Island of the Dolls near Mexico City, Mexico Island of the Dolls is a small island just south of Mexico City where hundreds of dolls hang from the trees. Legend has it that a young girl mysteriously drowned in the river. Her doll was found and hung from the tree in tribute. But not long after, it was believed the doll was possessed by the girl, so the man who originally found her, Julian, kept bringing more and more dolls in an attempt to please her spirit. After 50 years of collecting dolls and hanging them on the island, Julian was found dead, drowned in the same spot where the girl did. Many people on the island believe that Julian has joined the other spirits on the island. After his death in 2001, it had become a tourist attraction where visitors bring more dolls, some mutated and hanging from trees. The island has become very famous and has even been featured in many articles and TV shows including Ghost Adventures and Lore and was also featured on BuzzFeed Unsolved. Local legend says that the dolls move their head and arms and even open their eyes. Plain old dolls can be creepy, but a whole bunch of them on an island? I'm out. Number 6. The Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado The Stanley Hotel is an 140 room hotel about 5 miles from the entrance to Rocky Mountain National Park. It was built by Freeland Oscar Stanley and opened on July 4th, 1909. The Stanley Hotel inspired the Overlook Hotel in Stephen King's 1977 best selling novel, The Shining. In the years following the publication of The Shining, the Stanley Hotel gained a reputation as a setting for paranormal activity. It has hosted numerous paranormal investigators and appeared in shows such as Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. Stanley died in 1940, but many believe his presence can still be seen and felt at the hotel, mainly at the bar and in the billiard room. The ghost of his wife, Flora, has a habit for tinkering around the hotel's piano, according to multiple accounts. The fourth floor is the most haunted, with guests hearing children's laughter in the hall with no one to be found. Down the hall in room 407, multiple guests have reported being tucked into bed by some invisible force, and others have felt someone sit on the foot of the red only to find nothing there. In room 428, some have seen the vision of a cowboy looming over their bed as they slept or standing in the corner. There's also been a photo captured of a spirit on the main staircase of the hotel. This hotel inspired a horror movie, so it's a big nope from me. Number 5. The Paris Catacombs in France In the 18th century, amidst a public health crisis relating to the city's cemeteries, authorities decided to relocate the cemetery remains to an abandoned quarry. This effort created the meticulous arranged Paris catacombs lined with bones that holds the remains of more than 6 million people. As one visits the catacombs, a sign above reads, Arrête, c'est ici l'Empire de la Mort, which means stop, this is the empire of death. The catacombs of Paris became a curiosity for more privileged French and an early visitor was the Count of Aristos during 1787. Public visits began after its renovation and and the 1814 to 1815 war. First visits were allowed only a few times a year with permission of an authorized mines inspector, but later more frequently and permitted by any mine overseer. Over the years, it was open monthly, weekly, and eventually daily. The idea of this was smart, but going to visit it and seeing all those bones from dead people, that makes me uneasy. Number four. Hoya Bashu Forest in Cluja, Napica, Romania. This forest is located in Romania and it just looks creepy. It's filled with crooked trees, contorted into strange shapes, 
almost as if they're attempting to warn visitors. It's known as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, and there have been many reports of UFO sightings, ghost encounters, and unexplainable illness. There are many legends and stories about this forest, perhaps the creepiest being about a young girl who disappeared, only to emerge five years later with no recollection of what happened. Like, what? The Hoyabushu Forest has been featured in paranormal documentary TV shows from Ghost Adventures to Destination Truth and a Swedish series. Let it be known that you will never find me taking a stroll in this forest. Number 3. Bellwitch Caves in Adams, Tennessee The Bellwitch Cave is near where the Bell Farm once stood and is approximately 490 feet long. This cave has been associated with the Bell family where they were haunted by an entity now known as the Bell Witch. According to the legend, from 1817 to 1821, the family and the local area came under attack by a mostly invisible entity that was able to speak, affect physical environment, and shapeshift. Some accounts record the spirit also to have been clairvoyant and capable of crossing long distances with superhuman speed and or of being in more than one place at a time. The Bell Witch Cave has been associated with the spirit of Kate Batts, who allegedly haunted the Bell family as she was believed to be cheated by them in a land purchase. In the particular legend in which the cave is featured, young Betsy Bell and some of her friends had gone to explore the cave. While they were there, one of the boys crawled into a hole and became stuck. A voice cried out, I'll get him out. The boy felt hands grasping his feet and he was pulled out of the hole. The supposed entity, still invisible, then gave the young explorers a lecture on reckless cave exploring. Many believe that when the witch departed the family, she fled to the sanctuary of this cave. Number 2. The Conjuring House in Harrisville, Rhode Island Originally called the Arnold Estate, this house came filled with horrors. In January 1971, the Perrin family, Roger, Carolyn, and their five daughters, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, Cindy, and April, moved into a farmhouse. Not long after moving in, the family reportedly experienced all manners of paranormal activities, from apparitions to physical attacks by unseen hands. The most frequent apparition was that of a woman with a broken neck who came to be popularized as Bathsheba Sherman. Paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren inserted themselves into the family's alleged experiences, making the case famous via their lectures and eventually The Conjuring film. The Perrin family claimed that the paranormal experiences went on for almost 10 years until the family had to abandon the house in 1980. Today you can do tours of the house where guests report being touched and hearing voices, including one that will often warn guests to get out of the basement if there is a malvoyant spirit around. And number 1. Queen Mary in Long Beach, California Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California where she was permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark who accidentally drank cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But arguably the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is stateroom B340. Reports claim that someone was knocking on a door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. Even the hotel's maid started complaining about the experience and were scared. The room was closed for guests for many years due to all this and all I can say is no way. Number 10. White Rock Lake White Rock Lake is an area that is filled with many legends. It's home to the ghost of the Lady of the Lake. Years ago, a young couple was driving home from a party along the lake late one night. The two were tired and ready to go home when the wife suddenly screamed at her husband to stop the car. A young woman in a long white gown had appeared in the road before them. The couple asked the woman if she needed a ride and she accepted. They drove on 
and all while the wife could hear the steady drip, drip, drip of water. But once they reached the address the woman had given them, they turned around to find her gone, leaving behind only a puddle. Confused, the couple got out at the address and knocked on the door. An elderly man answered. They told the man about the young woman they had just picked up, and he sighed and told them they were not the first couple to come knocking on his door late at night. The woman they had picked up was his daughter, who had drowned in White Rock Lake 10 years earlier. The lady of the lake has been spotted and even picked up many times since, and continues to haunt White Rock Lake in her white gown, looking for a way back home. And this is just sad. <laughs> Number 9. Adolphus Hotel The Adolphus Hotel was built on the former site of Dallas's original city hall in 1912, and the hotel has a reputation as one of the city's most prominent historical landmarks. In addition to being the oldest hotel in the city, it's no surprise it's also among the most haunted. One of the most famous spirits here is an apparition who appears in a 1930s era white wedding gown, the spirit of a jilted bride who was supposed to have been married in one of the hotels hotel's glamorous ballrooms on the 19th floor, but ended up taking her own life at the hotel instead when her groom left her at the altar. Ever since that night, guests staying on the 19th floor report hearing a woman crying, footsteps running up and down the hall, and even the sound of rope creaking under the strain of a body. The bride spirit has been spotted wandering the halls after events and parties, still wearing her white dress and veil. Again, this is just incredibly sad. Staff and guests of the hotel also report or an eerie feeling of being watched or of a presence in the room with them. Now, not all ghost residents have sad backstories, as many are believed to be former guests who checked in again during the afterlife because they had such a good time in the hotel back in their days among the living. Guess it's a cool place to be in in life and death. Number 8. The Coombs Creek Trail Located in Oak Cliff, this trail offers a serene, scenic path along Coombs Creek for nature lovers to enjoy, but everything is not as it seems, as this trail has an eerie history. Years ago, a young girl named Mary would ride her bike every day along the trail, but one day, Mary never returned home. It's still unknown whether Mary drowned in the creek, was struck by a passing train, or was taken, but she seems to have disappeared without a trace. Hikers still report seeing the figure of a young girl riding her bike dangerously close to the edge of the water, but when they call out to warn her, she vanishes into thin air. Others have reported seeing a small ghostly face of a young girl peeking at them from behind a tree. When they try to move closer to investigate, the face disappears. Then the face reappears further along the trail, inviting the hiker to follow her deeper and deeper into the woods. And if a ghost child is trying to get me to go deeper in the woods, I'm just gonna turn around and leave. Number 7. The Majestic Theater The Majestic Theater is located on Elm Street in downtown Dallas. Elm Street? No, no, I've seen that movie before. Now, in the 1910s, it housed live bad villain performances before transitioning to screening films in 1922. The Majestic remained in business until the 1970s, and then its doors were reopened for live performances in 1983 after it landed on the National Register of Historic Places. Some say the theater's original owner, Carl Hoppitzel, still haunts the building, making sure things run according to his liking. One former employee claimed claims he shared an office space with Carl during his time there. He reports that one of his responsibilities each night was to ensure that the door in his office leading to the theater was locked, but each morning when he showed up for work, the door was wide open, and a strange chill would permeate from the room. When he mentioned this to his manager, he laughed and explained that this was only Carl, who liked to use the door to get into the theater and check up on things. Weird smells, stage props inexplicably moving, and a light hanging above the balcony illuminating on its own own have all been attributed to Carl. His spirit is rumored to linger there to this day, making sure his theater runs smoothly and maybe catching a show or two. Number 6. Snuffers Restaurant on Greenville Avenue Snuffers is a popular local chain that serves classic American food, or at least that's what it says when I google it. But the location on Greenville Avenue serves up a lot more than just burgers. Customers and staff of the Dallas restaurant claim that the place is seriously haunted. Before Snuffers 
snuffers, there was an easy parlor. It seems that a man was badly injured after hours when a fight broke out at an employee party. He then stumbled into the bathroom where he drew his final breaths. Years later, once Easy Parlor became Snuffers, the managers would sit at a table by the bathrooms each night to finish up closing paperwork. As they sat in the dark, near empty restaurant, they would listen as antagonized, stumbling footsteps made their way to the bathroom, then watch as the door creaked open by itself and never shut. In 2013, the original building was demolished and reconstructed, but reports of strange happenings didn't stop. Other employees have since reported feeling cold gusts of wind rush by them and doors slamming shut all on their own. Sounds like a dinner and a show to me. <laughs> Number 5. Flagpole Hill Just adjacent to White Rock Lake is a road leading to the infamous Flagpole Hill, the rumored location of a band of rock hurdling poltergeists. Yep, you heard that right, they just throw rocks at you. Passerbys report driving through the area late at night only to be pelted by a rain of pebbles. When they got out of the car to chase down the culprits, there were none to be found. Local legend identifies the ghost as three restless spirits tangled in the dark history of the area. According to the story, a construction worker ended their own life in the house on Flagpole Hill before its completion, and a hired hitman was later convicted of taking out the couple who occupied it. Now, don't think just because you're not in a car, you're safe. Those walking on foot rather than driving past seem to be just as unlucky. Hikers and other residents of the area have reported an unseen assailant pelting them with rocks as they pass by. Sounds like this place really rocks. Get it? Because... <laughs> So funny. Number four, the Miller Moore Mansion. Located in Dallas Heritage Village is Miller Moore Mansion. It was completed in 1857 and was the home of William Brown Miller, who served in the Confederate Army. This beautiful home is said to be haunted by an unidentified lady ghost who always seems to lurk near the nursery. Now, the general belief of who the lady is is the spirit of a woman named Emma. Now, Emma was the third wife of William Brown Miller, and allegedly, everyone who encounters Emma tells a similar story. People see a woman going up the stairs and they describe the same woman, always wearing a long brown dress. She has been seen in the front foyer and people claim to have seen her in the middle window where the nursery is. Many Millermore visitors have also reported unexplained cold spots and a distinct feeling of being watched during their visit. Seems like Emma is always watching. Number three, Sons of Herman Hall. Herman Hall's website marks itself as the oldest freestanding wood structure in Dallas, as well as the oldest bar. And for over a hundred years, the hall has held concerts, parties, and dances. So no wonder the dead come back there to party. Both staff members and guests of the hall have reported strange occurrences, especially in late hours of the night. Some guests have seen paintings fly off the wall as thrown by some unseen force. Others have heard footsteps in the hallways and seen doors suddenly slam shut. Guests also claim to hear children laughing, even when no children were present, which is just creepy. Longtime staff members of Herman Hall report sensing a lingering presence and seeing flashes of light and shadow. One particular staff member recounts a time he and some other employees saw a couple dressed in Victorian era clothing walk past them and go upstairs, but about 30 minutes later when the couple hadn't returned, the staff went upstairs to find all the doors locked and no one inside them. I just think these ghosts want to return to their party days though. Number 2. Goatman's Bridge Goatman's Bridge, more formally known as the Old Alton Bridge in Argyle. Dating back to the 1930s, locals have told tales of the specter of a strange half man, half goat creature lurking beneath the bridge. The goat man is said to stand over seven feet tall with big horns and glowing red eyes, which to me just sounds like the devil, but I mean, hey, goat man is a cool name. Some believe the goat man remains dormant for years at a time and awakes only to hunt for prey. Now, the goat man isn't the only spirit on this bridge, as to keep him company is another spirit that of a young mother crying out eternally for her lost child. Residents making their way over the bridge late at night have reported hearing her ghostly wails. Some say the two ghosts are connected and that years ago the goat man stole the young woman's baby. When she found out, she threw herself from the bridge and her spirit has haunted it ever since. Now I already don't like bridges because of heights and being over bodies of water, but being on a haunted bridge? 
No, thank you. And coming in at number one is Miss Molly's Hotel. Located in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Miss Molly's Hotel is a little deceiving. In the lawless pioneer days of the Old West, Miss Molly's operated as a bordello, making working girls and their customers among the most common apparitions to appear here. One such customer even has a room named after him, the Cowboy Room, where he has been frequently spotted by guests and staff of the hotel. His name is Jake the Cowboy, and when Paula go became manager of Miss Molly's, she had no clue that it was haunted. After months, she reported that strange things started happening and she eventually saw Jake herself. She said, I saw him in full body, he walked into a room and shut the door behind him, and I went up and knocked on the door and opened the door and no one was there. That is when I knew that something was up because I'm sitting there thinking I know I'm not crazy. Another ghost there is assumed to be a former madame by the name of Josie King. Some suspect that she oversaw the house during its bordello days. Josie is seen a lot, usually at 3 a.m. at the foot of the bed, and allegedly Josie likes to watch people sleep. Um, no, no thanks. Guests can also look at the hotel's collection of creepy photographs or listen to eerie audio recordings captured through the years. Number 10, Satan's Castle San Bernardino. Yes, this place is called Satan's Castle, and it's a no from me. Satan's Castle sits on a mountainous region that is filled with both religious and satanic lore dating back to the 19th century. There are said to be underground tunnels linking to various points of interest across the mountain, which were used during the Prohibition era. These tunnels were created mostly for transportation and smuggling booze, but also served for darker purposes. One of these tunnels is rumored to connect a Catholic church to Satan's castle. It is said to have been the grounds for dark ritualistic practices, which included both human and animal animal sacrifices, along with other dark ceremonies. Not to mention inside one of the rooms a pentagram used to be painted on the ground. Local Christians painted over it with the John 3.16 verse, but the pentagram always bled through. Definitely sounds satanic to me, and I will not be visiting there. Number 9. Preston Castle, Ione the Preston School of Industry, also known as Preston Castle, was a reform school that opened in June 1894 and was considered one of the oldest and best known reform schools in the United States. The boys there grew their own food, raised livestock, and learned farming trades. Additionally, there was a print shop, bakery, and cobbler shop where the boys could learn skills for self-preservation in the real world. The superintendent controlled the life inside the school and discipline was extreme. Starvation, isolation, and public paddling and lashings, and severe strategies were common at Preston. Now, this school has seen a lot of death. There are 17 men buried on the school grounds because they died there. Samuel Goines had his life ended after attempting to escape from the school. In 1950, Preston's head housekeeper, Anna Corbin, was beaten to death in the school's basement as well, and they never found out who did it. Employees and visitors believe that these young men are still haunting the school, which only closed in 1960, by the way. Those who have toured the grounds since have reported many strange sights and sounds, slamming doors, falling objects, disembodied voices, and ghostly physical contact. Number 8. Camp Pendleton, Area 41, San Diego Camp Pendleton is a coastal marine corps base with a dark history. This place is divided up into sections and Area 41 is haunted. Locks have been tampered with, furniture displaced, items gone missing, and strange noises are heard throughout the camp. Many think that this is done by one broken hearted marine in particular. This man was in love and had recently asked his girlfriend to marry him. After she had said yes, he thought his life was going great, but it didn't last long. The Marine was in his housing unit when his fiance got a hold of him and told him that she was ending the relationship. He was so upset that he ended his life in a second story room of the barracks. Now, some Marines are convinced his spirit remains in the area and haunts Area 41 in particular. A general feeling of unease is common here, and to this day, Marines claim that they hear the faint sound of a man softly humming the Jeopardy game show theme song around the grounds. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> 
Number 7. The Hotel de Coriando San Diego Hotel de Coriando is a historic hotel that opened in 1888. Kate Morgan has haunted this hotel since 1892, the year she checked in and awaited the arrival of her husband. The two were traveling con artists and not surprisingly, her husband never showed up and 4 days later, Kate was found dead at the bottom of an outdoor staircase leading to the Coronado Beach. Today, those who check into Kate's room, which is now room 3312, have had spooky experiences to say the least. Curtains blowing even though the windows are closed, objects moved by unseen hands, murmuring sounds and even sightings of Kate walking down the hallways and peering out the windows have all been reported. Her ghost is often seen both in the hotel and on the beach. Now room 3519, formerly room 3502, is also haunted. Once a maid's room, it's been the site of numerous paranormal occurrences such as objects moving around by themselves. Number 6. The Whaley House, San Diego The Whaley House is the oldest brick structure in Southern California and was the home of Thomas Whaley and his family. At various times, it also housed Whaley's General Store, San Diego's Second County Courthouse, and the first commercial theater in San Diego. The house has witnessed more history than any other building in the city, and it is extremely haunted. One of the most infamous ghosts there is the spirit of Yankee Jim Robinson. Yankee Jim was hanged in the gallows where the house now stands in 1852 after being convicted of stealing horses. Thomas Whaley himself, who owned and lived in the house with his family years later, said they could hear heavy footsteps going up and down the stairs. Now visitors have reported cold spots and the feeling of their chest and throat tightening within the home. Others claim to have seen Yankee Jim 2, an apparition that appears and disappears when you get too close. Today, and for many years, visitors to the house have also reported seeing Thomas. They usually see him wearing a frock coat and pantaloons standing on the second story landing. Others have seen his wife Anna, usually floating around in the garden or the downstairs room. Her ghost, which appears white and billowy, seems to just drift about and then disappears. Number Number 5. Winchester Mystery House, San Jose Now after finding out what this place is, I really want to visit here. I mean just by the name Mystery House, it's cool. Now some backstory on the house, Sarah Winchester lived a tragic yet interesting life. She married William Wirt Winchester in 1862 who was a very wealthy man. Sadly though, her husband, mother and father-in-law all passed away within the same year. To deal with her grief, she moved to California after gaining a large inheritance from her husband. Then on top of all of that, Sarah was being haunted by the spirits of those whose lives were ended by the Winchester rifle which her husband's company had invented. After her husband passed away, a psychic told her to evade the spirits, she would need to move out west, buy a home, and build non-stop. She took 36 years to construct the home, and this house has 6 kitchens, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 17 chimneys, 160 rooms, and many doors and stairs that lead to nowhere. Workers and visitors swear they hear howling at night, loud creaking, and sometimes the kitchen smells like someone is actively cooking. But regardless if you believe in ghosts or not, the house is absolutely stunning. Number 4. Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, Los Angeles the Hollywood Roosevelt is considered to be one of the most haunted hotels in Los Angeles. It first opened its doors in 1927 and was a frequent home to Marilyn Monroe, who often stayed in the second floor cabana. Interestingly, the doors to this hotel are still open, allowing visitors to spend the night in Marilyn's suite, and some people claim to have seen Marilyn's ghost smiling and blowing kisses at them in their hotel mirrors. Hotel workers often talk about seeing the ghost of Charlie Chaplin and feel temperatures drop quickly quickly from one room to the next. The apparition of Montgomery Clift has been blamed for patting guests shoulders and watching maids in room 928 where he stayed for 3 months while filming from here to eternity. The ghost of Carol Lombard has also been spotted floating around the upper floors and in the Blossom Room where the first Oscars were held, two ghosts have been spotted, a presence of a tuxedoed man and a presence of a man in a white suit. Seems like if you want to meet a dead celebrity, the Roosevelt Hotel is the place to go. Number 3. Alcatraz San Francisco Bay The famous maximum security prison Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary earned a reputation as one of the most brutal and inhumane prisons in the
in the country during its day. The strong currents around the island and cold water temperatures made escape nearly impossible, and the prison became one of the most notorious in American history. The prison closed in 1963, and the island is now a major tourist attraction. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts, 23 were caught alive, 6 had their lives ended by guards during their escape, 2 drowned, and 5 are listed as missing and presumed drowned. Now, during its 29 years in use, Alcatraz held some of the most notorious American criminals, including Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Bumpty Johnson. Today, it's a tourist attraction that many believe to be haunted. Inexplicable events happen, like the sound of someone playing the banjo. Many believe this to be the spirit of Al Capone, who spent his last days at the prison playing a banjo in the shower room to avoid being injured in the yard. The smell of smoke, the sounds of cell doors slamming, disembodied voices, moaning, and screams have also all been reported. Number 2. Queen Mary, Long Beach Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California, where she is permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction, featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits, including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter, who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark, who accidentally drank dry cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But most arguably, the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is room B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. There are even more stories about this place, but I don't have enough time to fit them all in. If you're really interested in Queen Mary, I say do some homework on it because it definitely gets creepier. And coming in at number one is the Cecil Hotel, Los Angeles. The Cecil Hotel opened in 1925 as a well furnished hostelry frequented by respectable people, but that didn't last long. As downtown became more and more dangerous, the Cecil became a place where bad people stayed, like the Night Stalker aka Richard Ramirez and Austrian killer Jack Underweger spent time there. The Black Dahlia was rumored to have had her last drink at the hotel bar before she turned up dead a few miles away. In 1962, Pauline Otten jumped from the ninth floor window, ending her life. That same year, Julia Moore jumped from an eighth floor window. and. And Helen Guerin from the seventh floor in 1954. The Cecil Hotel may have rebranded itself recently as the Stay on Main, but it just can't shake its reputation as a place where scary things happen. In 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb was found in the hotel's rooftop cistern. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. And yes, people had been showering in and drinking that water. And last but not least, the ghost of a boy has reportedly been photographed outside a fourth floor window. Spooky. Kicking off our list at number 10, room 206. This gives me Stephen King 1408 vibes, and I'm not sure that you're ready. Next time you visit Florida, make sure you read every customer review before you check into a hotel, because some of them might be full of ghosts. That might be a thing that you just might have to deal with. Room 206 at the Super on International Drive, apparently it's super haunted. Guests have reported the bed shaking in the middle of the night, probably terrible for your sleep, or freezing cold air even though the AC is turned off. And worst of all, guests have seen their bed look as though somebody was sleeping there moments before, even though it was perfectly made right before they checked in. Can ghosts squat? Is that legal? We've got a couple of spirit squatters in our room gotta move. Number 9. Disney on Ice Many families love to visit Orlando at this time of year. The theme parks there are spectacular, especially Disney World. I went once when I was younger, but you know, I don't recall ever seeing a real life Walt Disney. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the fact that he died in 1966. Who knows? But never say never. One of Orlando's oldest tales is that Walt Disney had his body cryogenically frozen after his death. 
and right now apparently it's being stored in a bunker underneath the theme park. I mean, that's a bit more creative than being cremated. I'll give him that. It's pretty Walt Disney of him just to freeze himself forever. A grad from the University of Central Florida Film School, Benjamin Lancaster, they actually made a film about this whole idea. It's called The Further Adventures of Walt's Frozen Head. That's a, that's a family classic, some would say. Number eight, Scarlett O'Hara's. You're gonna need two pieces of ID for this next one, all right? Perhaps the most haunted bar in Florida, located in St. Augustine, Scarlett O'Hara's is haunted by a past owner. Many believe that spirit likes to make itself known to guests. That's always fun. Try and go grab a pint and now you got a ghoul in front of you. That spirit is one of George Coley. Now George sadly bit the bullet one night when he was in his bathtub. So now we have a series of unexplainable events. Plates and glasses will sometimes move across the bar on their own and the jukebox keeps playing Help Me Rhonda even when it's unplugged. So that's absolutely terrifying. If you want to check it out now, be warned because it's a full-on tourist attraction at this point. But if you go, you can pose alongside the same bathtub that George Colley died in. Yeah, how lovely is that? Are we going to Disney World? Nah, even better, Scarlett O'Hara's. Yeah, you're gonna love it. Number seven, Stranahan House. You don't want to be stranded at the Stranahan House. It's gonna be bad news. Fort Lauderdale has a few haunted hidden gems and the oldest house just happens to be the most haunted. What do you know, what odds are that? What odds are that? What are those odds? There we go. The house's OG owner was Frank Stranahan and today if you visit ye old stomping grounds, well, you might catch Frank in a photo or two. It's said that Frank still oversees the place and he regularly shows up in guests' photos. So this ghost likes to photo bomb. That's pretty amazing, I kinda like that. I suppose being trapped in the same house for all of eternity it probably gets a little boring from time to time. Just to pop into a photo, throw some peace signs up, and then disappear back into the walls. Ivy Stranahan, Frank's late wife, she also has made an appearance or two. Nice, true love is haunting the same house forever. Guests have felt a cold hand on their shoulder and her perfume still lingers in the hallway. Must have been some good strong stuff, nice. Now it's not all fun and games. Augustus Stranahan, AKA Frank's father, well, his ghost likes to throw books. It's really aggressive, so heads up for that, I guess, if you go. Cheers. Number six, the Plaza Resort and Spa. Ah, yes, kick back and relax with ghosts. It's just what you want. You're never alone, I guess, that's a plus side. The Plaza Resort and Spa sounds like a relaxing getaway until you start looking up footage of the actual resort. One's gonna, one's gonna get your attention for sure. Back in August 2013, security cameras captured late night footage of this shape-shifting ghost, some sort of spirit, some scary blob. It's bad news, really, in any regard. What happened was the original building was destroyed by fire in 1909, and current staff will testify that they've seen the ghosts of victims caught in that blaze. How they know, I have no idea, but apparently they do know. It's a lot of details for one ghost appearance. One of the most common sightings includes a woman whose spirit is known to mess with the elevators and make items in the kitchen disappear. Okay, really? That, that last one's for sure an employee stealing food. He's like, oh yeah, I don't know. I think a ghost ate that cheesecake, boss. I don't know, spooky stuff, spooky. Number five, the Blue Anchor Pub. Another bar, another haunted bill to pay. Here we go, debit or credit. Heading over to Delray Beach, the Blue Anchor Pub was built in 1840s in London, but the wooden interior was sent to New York City and then later on sent to Florida in 1996. So yeah, these spirits must be confused. They go from Jack the Ripper to some dude wearing a Yankees hat talking to a TV. Trapped in the wooden interior is the ghost of one Bertha Starkey, who was sadly killed by her husband back in the 1840s. Now, you know Bertha is lurking about when you hear rattling pots in the kitchen, and sometimes, sometimes if you're really unlucky, you'll hear wailing in the middle of the night. Nice, again, horrible sleep at this place. The Blue Anchor sounds like a really relaxing time, but every night at 10 o'clock, the current owners will blast a ship horn to scare away her spirit. I don't know, I feel like blaring a ship horn at 10 p.m. is more jarring than some pots and pans moving sometimes. Know what I mean? I'd rather hear the pots and pans than in the middle of the night, no way. Number four, the Biltmore Hotel. Another hotel to avoid at all costs. Awesome, we love these ones. First of all, do you actually like staying at a hotel? Some people love it, some people find it super relaxing. I can't help but think about what went on in the bed before me, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, eh, why does this part of the bed feel a little bit caved in? What's going on here? Every time I'm in a hotel, I have the worst dreams and I can't sleep at all. The Biltmore Hotel in the city of Coral Gables is also one of the most haunted hotels in Florida. 
You've probably heard of this at some point. It all started in 1926 during initial construction. The Biltmore witnessed a foul killing on the 13th floor. The 13th floor of all floors, my god. The Biltmore was also turned into a military hotel during World War II before ultimately being closed and then abandoned later in 1968. Now, the city renovated the hotel later on in the 80s, but it didn't take long for ghost stories to start to spread. It's horrible, horrible past, I mean, more than fair. Now, of course, the most activity is on the 13th floor, so if you do check this one out, really double down. Go to the haunted floor, you know? Don't just look outside and then book. Go in, stay a night. I can't believe some buildings don't have a 13th floor. Can you imagine that? Well, they do, but everyone pretends that they don't. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, it's 12. I don't know, we'll see. Are you a 13th floor believer? Comment down below. Me personally, I don't think so. Cause it's the 14th or the 12th or the 13th. I don't know anymore. No one knows anymore. It goes 11, 12, 14. You're like, really? What's the 14s? We know what's going on here, come on. Number three. Tampa Theater. If you're a fellow theater kid, you're also gonna love this one. Here we go. Tampa Theater opened up in 1926. The theater is now said, of course, to be haunted by a woman that was struck and killed by a carriage on the property. Imagine being hit by a carriage, it's so slow. This was actually before the theater was built, so her spirit has been there for a while. If you go to Tampa Theater today, you might catch a glimpse of that woman in a white gown walking across the mezzanine hallway. This time, without carriages whipping through, hopefully, sans carriage. Imagine telling somebody in front of you to sit down during a show, then they just disappear. And you're like, I think that was a ghost. I think that was probably a ghost. It says in the playbill, ghost, so maybe that was her. Tampa Theater, of course, has leaned into these claims. Now they offer Ghosts of Tampa Theater Tour, where guests can learn about its haunted history. I'd love to do this tour. I don't know. Maybe I'll go to Florida. Who knows? I won't. <laughs> I'm like, I'm probably not going to. Number two, Key West Cemetery. A cemetery that's haunted Get out of town, you don't say. The Beachside Cemetery was built in 1847. Now it was built specifically for victims of a hurricane that occurred a year prior in 1846. That's terrible. Now the cemetery is the final resting place for roughly 80,000 to 100,000 people. So yeah, I can only assume there's a ghost or two hanging out. That's extremely tragic. Walking through a graveyard at night is scary enough anytime, but Key West Cemetery is so specific that the entire time you're walking through, you feel connected in a way. Now me, personally, I'm all set. I don't want to feel connected to an 1846 tragedy. I'm all set. I'll go the long way around the cemetery and then I'll meet you on the other side, if anything. But if you're into this kind of thing, they also offer ghost tours, so knock yourself out. There you go. Apparently it's too scary for children, so that's a plus. Lines will be a little, little shorter than usual. And finally, number one, St. Augustine Lighthouse. A scary lighthouse? How? How is that possible? The St. Augustine Lighthouse is located, of course, in Florida and was built between 1871 and 1874. And it's considered Florida's first official lighthouse ever. Imagine that. Boom, let there be light. Hey, I made you a lighthouse. Enjoy. We're all good now. There have been several tragic events over the following years, seeing as it's the first lighthouse ever. It's seen a lot of history. But even during initial construction, there were several freak accidents on site. Today, said spirits are still lurking about. Sightings of shadowy figures are common, but one time, just one time, somebody saw a hand coming through the tower door. Yeah, a floaty hand, like from idle hands. How terrifying is that? Can you imagine just a Smash Bros hand just lurking near you? Several guests have reported furniture also moving around on its own, which is definitely a hazard. And one person even said that they had some of their arm hairs plucked off of them while they were in the basement. Probably that floaty weird hand just Give me one of those. Another guest felt someone grab their ankle at one point while walking down a hallway, which actually caused them to trip and fall down. So something's going on. I don't know what this ghost hand wants, but it's pretty chaotic to me, it seems. If you enjoyed these videos about places straight out of your nightmares, then you have to check out this video next. It's about Ed and Lorraine Warren and the actual demons they encountered. We're already not sleeping tonight, so might as well stick around for more scary content. See you guys in the next video.